Good morning, fellas. Today's weekly teaching, I'm going to be talking to you about the parable of the talents. So if you've got a Bible with you, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. While you're doing that, I'm going to have a sip of this delicious black coffee. Cheers, Cody. Okay. So Matthew 25, 14, the parable of the talents. Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is, a, is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his ability. And straightway he took his journey. And he that received the five talents went it and bought and sold or traded with them and made five other talents. And likewise, he who'd received two, he also traded and gained two more. But he who received one, he went and dug a hole and hid it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came back and he reckoned with them. And so he who'd received the five talents came and brought five other. Five other. And he said, Lord, you gave to me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he who received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents, and behold, I gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who received one talent came forward and said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not uh, um, scattered and I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the earth here it is have what is yours and his lord answered and said to him you wicked and lazy servant you knew I reap where I don't sow you ought to have put my money to the bankers and then at my coming I would have received my own with interest take therefore the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten for he who has for everyone who has for unto every one hath shall be given. I'm actually translating live from the KGV, so please forgive me. For everyone who has been given, he will be given abundance. But from him who has nothing, even that will be taken away. This is a pretty harsh ending to that parable. And I'm going to unpack for you what I think this means and how I've applied it to my own life. First of all, I'm going to start by saying, what was a talent? So we think of talents as... Or somebody is very talented, he's a sportsman, uh, you know, she's a musician, or that person's a talented mathematician. We, we use this word in our modern vernacular to describe natural giftings or abilities that we have. But that's not what it meant in Bible times. In the Greek, the word talent meant a weight, a unit of measure. It was approximately 80 pounds or 30 or 40 kilos in weight, and it corresponded to that much weight in silver. A talent was approximately 6,000 denarii, where a denarii was one day's wage. It was one Roman coin. So 6,000 days wage corresponded to approximately 20 to 25 years labor for the average workman. And the Lord came to the servants in this parable and he gave to one servant, he gave one talent, 25 years labor worth of silver or gold. And to another, he gave two, 50 years worth. And to another, he gave five. And he said to them, go therefore and buy and sell. Do business until I come back. Now I want you to think about this and try and put it in modern terms uh, that we can understand. Okay? Imagine that your boss calls you in and he says, oh, hey, you know, Bob, come over here. I've got to talk to you. And you say, hey, what's up, boss? How can I help? And he says, right, I'm going out of town for a few weeks. Um, here's some money. Slips a suitcase over, flicks it open, turns it around. I want you to do some business while I'm gone. And he opens this thing and in it is 20 years labor. Do you know how much that would be? It'd be about half a million dollars. Yeah, you'd freak out. That's one talent. Now imagine you were the two talent or the five talent guy. He gave you, whoosh, opens the case, there it is, two and a half million dollars. You're in charge, I'm going on a trip, I'll be back soon, um, don't mess up. You'd freak out, right? So this is why this servant who had one, he buried it. He was scared. He was afraid. 
But what I want you to now relate this to is spiritually, what does it mean? In the Bible, Jesus was talking about a unit of money, but obviously he's talking about spiritual gifts. He's talking about spiritual investment. So God has given each of us a measure. He's given us a talent, or he may have given us several talents. And he said to us, go therefore and do business with these talents. Use what you've been given. And God says that these talents are valuable. We might think, oh, I'm okay at singing, but I'm not really very good. I'm not good enough to go on the worship band. Or you may think, hey, I'm okay at teaching and preaching, but I hate being on camera. That's me, by the way. But you know what? God says these things are valuable to the tune of half a million dollars each. Go and do business with them. Go and invest them in my kingdom. So I want you to think about that today, guys. What does that mean to you? What, what does it mean to have been given talents? Now also think about what does God say to the guy who went and he, he took a risk by buying and selling? Think about the risk that he took because in those days, it would have been pretty obvious if you were riding around with 80 pounds or 160 pounds or you know, 300 pounds worth of silver, you would have need donkeys and horses to carry that and it would have made like a chink chink noise as you went along, right? And those were dangerous times. You could have been robbed. You could have had a bad business deal. Things could have gone very wrong. God's asking us to take a risk with what he's given us as well. So he says, I have given you giftings. The giftings are valuable. I want you to invest them in my kingdom. Oh, and I want you to take a risk. That means stepping out in faith. That means sometimes standing up and talking, even if you don't feel like it. That means sometimes writing that letter or that book that you've been thinking of writing, maybe preaching that sermon that you've been thinking of preaching, writing that song, that worship song that you've been thinking about, starting that business that God has put on your heart, doing whatever it is that God has called you to. I think that it's wonderful that Jesus related to us in parables because he spoke in simple terms that we could understand and he always used something that was relatable to the people of the day. So let me relate this back to you. Your talents, your giftings are valuable. God asks you to take a risk. God asks you to invest them in the kingdom and to make profit, spiritual profit. Go therefore and buy and sell. The servants came back and showed what they had gained by trading. They had gained more and they showed them to the Lord. And the Lord said to those who were productive and fruitful, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. But to the one who buried his talent in the ground, he had harsh words to say, wicked and lazy servant. Take what he has and give it to the one who has 10. That's shocking, right? That doesn't sound very much like at the Jesus that we know, who is kind, gracious, compassionate, loving, forgiving, who says he who is without sin cast the first stone. But yet he said that. This is a characteristic of God. If we're given gifts, if we're given things and then God puts it on our heart and, and asks us to go out and take a risk to invest into his kingdom. And if we don't do it, if we sit on it, there can be tough consequences. I want you guys to think about this and meditate on it and have a think. What is it that you've been given? What is your talent? Maybe you have more than one. Maybe there's been something that's been on your heart for a long time. Maybe it's something unusual, not necessarily directly related to the church or to building the kingdom of God. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I, I run a software business. What's that got to do with the gospel? Absolutely nothing. I write code and then ship it and, and we do business. But that's a talent that God gave me and it's a passion that I have. And I enjoy using that for the kingdom of God because we're able to support ministries through it. You know, there was also the story of Eric Little from Chariots of Fire. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but that was in the 1980s. It was a bit of a cheesy movie, but Eric Little was a mid 1920s athlete and he wanted to win Olympic gold and he was a runner, but he was also a Christian and he wanted to be a missionary and God put it on his heart so strongly to be a missionary and go to China and preach the gospel. And he wrestled with this. And if you watch the film or you've read the story, you'll know that he wrestled with it. And there's a quote by Eric Little where he said, I know that God made me 
for this, for this purpose, to go and be a missionary. But he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. He knew that it wasn't a waste of time to run for the glory of God. That was his talent. And he did it. And then they made a motion picture out of it and a book and a story. And the whole world got to know about this man's faith, how much he loved God and that he won and he honoured God, you know? And guess what? Out went the gospel. Out goes the kingdom of God. Out comes the prophet from the talent, fruit like you never imagined. In my experience, God often does things a little bit unusual. This is in the Bible. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. What we think might be a genius plan for helping God out, you know, I'm going to help you out, Lord, on your little Great Commission mission. You know, I've got these ideas. That genius plan might not be what he has in mind. Maybe he has an unconventional plan, completely different to what you possibly could have imagined. I want you to take this away and think about it. Talents. What has God given you? What have you got? Are you using it for the kingdom of God? Can you use it for the kingdom of God? Even if it's an unconventional talent, maybe you're an athlete, maybe you're a businessman, maybe you work in banking and finance, who knows? Maybe it's got nothing to do with the church. How can you use it for his glory? Maybe God has impressed on your heart that you have been burying your talent. I will confess to you that God's been pressing that on my heart because I know that I'm supposed to stand up here and put the camera on and make some teachings and talk to you guys. And I know I can do that, but I don't like being on film. So I've been thinking about it and wrestling with it. And God said, hey, as you're preparing that teaching, are you burying your talent? Convicted. Guys, God bless you. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Um, if you have any thoughts about that, comment under the video and let's chat. God bless you guys. All the best. Bye.